Hey, this is Steven from Green Engineers, and uh, welcome back to my chore chat series. Uh, it's been a while, a little while since I did the last one. The last one was about the EcoBase 3D printer. Um, I'm going to be uh, trying to do more of them. I, I'm getting better at uh, doing more of them, uh, especially when I have uh, various chores going on nowadays. Uh, so basically the chore for today is I'm driving to the shop.build in San Francisco. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, the San Jose, uh, the shop.build San Jose um, is not yet open. Um, they were supposed to be open June 1st, it's now June 14th, it's like 16th or something. Actually it should be the 5th, yeah 6th, 16th, it should be the 16th. So obviously they've, they've fallen way behind. I've talked to Dan Russo and he says, uh, which is the head of the shop. And right now he's the head of the shop. I don't think they have a CEO or anything yet, but he uh, claimed that um, they have some legal problems that they're trying to resolve. So uh, they are working on that now. So I'm driving up to uh, San Francisco to start uh, progressing towards uh, what I need to do for EcoBase 3D printer. Uh, I'm going to check out their, so I'm going to use their laser. They have a, a fiber laser out there. It's not, it can't, you can just mark steel, but fiber laser's got a way smaller laser than a CO2 laser, so way more power per square inch per area. Uh, but they also have a 120 watt CO2 laser, which I definitely want to try out. So, um, going to be going over there to check it out also they got their plasma installed and running as far as I know so uh, I'm also going to be going down there to check that out to see if I get some test cuts made to see if it makes uh, good shredder parts and if it does I will continue to use it but again there at uh, the shop got built in San Francisco at least I'm, I'm sure it's going to be the same way in San Jose it does not have a water table so it might just heat treat the inside square and it might just be the same old mess that uh, the old tech shop was in uh, Redwood City with their um, with their plasma cutter but um, the hopefully the accuracy uh, hopefully it's got end stops and the accuracy is way better uh, per the f four by eight uh, foot travel so hopefully uh, uh, none of that really changed much so Hopefully it's still uh, hopefully it's still working well, and uh, we could maybe get them to do a test cut of the shredder and see if it is a viable option to uh, to make uh, make the shredders on. Uh, probably gonna be down there till four four o'clock or so, and then head home. Um, yeah. So today's subject is uh, the future. Uh, what is my schedule looking like past um, past summer and into my last year at university uh, which is you know the pretty imminent future I guess you could say uh, not the not the not the far reach future so <clears throat> the next year is very very important for me in university is probably gonna be my funnest year However, going to be one of my most uh, stressful slash um, busy year that I've ever had at university. So next year, I'm going to be next semester. I'm going to be taking four to five classes, while last semester I only took two. Uh, the, the semester after that, my last semester, I'll also be taking four to five classes. So the main thing that's coming up and the main thing that I want to talk about, but I'm kind of going to talk about everything, is the upcoming, um, the big part of this last year for a mechanical engineering student uh, like myself is the senior project. So a senior project is basically you pick a, you either pick a project or you join a team to create an engineering project that uh, performs a task or solves a problem, you know, basic engineering stuff where we have a problem and we try to create a product uh, product to solve it. So, you know, maybe like, like, you know, example like a 3D printer or some people made like a jet engine out of a turbo or like um, 
a, a vertical windmill or um, one of them that's really popular now is the uh, the Spartan Hyperloop stuff or the uh, the alternative transportation which is like the um, like the rail cars you see at like uh, what is it called um, it's basically like a maglev uh, magnetic levitation car that's suspended from a rail system just like you see on like rides at amusement parks and stuff to travel from one place to another so people be working on that people be working on electric cars electric goat carts electric uh, what are they called um, golf carts different projects like that so uh, what am I doing um, I plan on creating my own project. Oh, and uh, there's a... Okay, so let me go more into it. So there's a team of three to four, I believe, that work together. Uh, depending on which one you go into, um, you can either go into in, uh, Engineering 195, which is the entire engineering department uh, senior project, uh, which, basic, which basically with that you have... More than just mechanical engineers get it go into that senior project. You have a um, you have a sponsor that comes in that you know basically gives you a project to do and funding to do it, right? But you cannot create your own project. It has to be the sponsor has to come in and do it. But you get other uh, you get other disciplines in it as well. So you could get. You get electrical engineers, you get uh, uh, software engineers, you get civil engineers. I don't even know if civil engineering even has a senior project. It might, you might not be able to get senior, uh, civil engineers. But um, you get all those, uh, all those other types of engineers into your team, and so you have a multidiscipline team. While you have the regular uh, ME195, which is just mechanical engineering 195. You'll only get mechanical engineers to join your team because they're the only ones taking the class, the ME class, because the ME class is only is limited to only mechanical engineers. So electrical engineers cannot take ME 195. However, they do take engineer. They can take engineering 195. So, uh, but that is limited to where you cannot create your own project. So I'm going to be doing um, ME 195. Uh, mechanical engineering 185 because you can create your own project and create your own team so I've kind of already picked my advisor and to that advis advisor within maybe the next week or so I'm going to be sending him um, a layout of what I want my project to be uh, I actually saw him again at uh, Maker Fair this year uh, that would have been May um, I talked to him in May about, uh, yeah, me. I talked to him in May about uh, my project, and he came by my booth and saw the stuff I was working on, and he told me to go ahead and submit it to him, and uh, he will announce it the first day on um, on people, you know, to the people that want to join. And then if I don't get people that want to join, I'm going to have to create my own team. Hopefully, worst worst case scenario. I have to join uh, a different project, but that is worse. I definitely don't want to be doing that. If I'm doing the project, I definitely want to be doing my own project. If I'm going to be doing a project for, for um, senior project, I want it to be my project and something that I'm actually going to use later on. So what is this project? Um, I wanted to do a industry size version of my machines. So a so my three machines are again the uh, filament maker or extruder, I guess you could call it. But yeah, filament maker um, is number one. Is number one shredder is number two, and a three uh, D printer is over three. So with all three of those, um, you'll be able to create what I call a microfab or a micro factory that you will be able to produce these pro you'll be able to produce products from scrap plastic so you can put it you first you take scrap plastic put it in the shredder shred it down you clean it you do all that stuff you clean you take all the all the um, 
all the labels and stuff off of it. Then you put it in the, uh, then you uh, put it in the uh, filament maker, turn it into filament. You know, nice consistent diameter filament, pretty quickly. And then you put it in a 3D printer to then be 3D printed. So, uh, and then if the 3D print fails, you could re-shred it, remake the filament, and then reprint it. So that's what my three machines are now. They're, ba they're the three machines right now are designed to be used in a home with a consumer, right? So consumer side, which uh, you know has very limited use of it. You know they're not going to do massive amounts of shredding of plastic. They're not going to do massive amounts of filament creation. They're not going to do massive amounts of printing. Well, sometimes they do massive amounts of printing, but. Uh, my next version, or the, for the senior project, what I want to do is I think it would be way, it's actually going to be easier because with the other way, you have to worry about being able to ship it and stuff like that. There's a lot more that goes into a consumer product than a um, industrial product. So basically, I'm going to be taking those products, supersizing them, increasing their speed, increasing their size for a production shop almost, I guess you could say. So a very large shredder. So let's say uh, right right now it's, a, it's an outside dimensions of about, uh, it's gonna be about six and a quarter, six plus a quarter plus a quarter plus another two quarters. So it's about seven inches. It's about seven inches long by six inches wide and three and a half inches tall. So the new version would be, you know, about four times that, you know, 24 inches wide, so two feet wide by two feet wide by, um, it would be like, um, maybe like a foot tall almost. So a really, really big shredder that will do uh, a large amount of plastic and be able to shred bigger objects and have a giant hopper on it that will push a lot of material in there to be repurposed into filament and obviously have sharper blades maybe even uh, it, it, I might be still limited on cost because uh, like I said I'm not gonna have a um, I'm not gonna have a sponsor um, like they do in engineering 195 so I'm probably gonna be paying out of pocket or or doing a Kickstarter or something on it even though it's difficult with Kickstarter, very hard to send something out unless it's filament itself or something, um, recycled filament, and then but then I gotta gather all the materials and stuff. So, yeah. Um, so funding's gonna be tough, uh, but I think it will um, work its way out, and I'll explain why later. So that's the example of the shredder. So just basically a supersized version of the shredder that I have currently. Uh, next one is the filament maker. So the filament maker would be just like uh, a few years ago. I, I met him at uh, Maker Fair, my first time at Maker Fair in 20, 2016. In 2016, um, it was the protopasta guys that uh, run the proto plant, and apparently now they've got a bigger warehouse. I've seen them in a few different uh, YouTubers' videos. Uh, they, they have, they've also built their own machines, and they're huge. And they do about a spool every, uh, I think it's like four minutes or less. So it takes them four minutes to do a spool. While my first version of the extruder, the multi-extruder, was can only do about six feet every minute. So you're talking about, uh, what was it, 1,000 meters, or is it 1,000 feet? I think it's 1,000 meters, something on 1,000 feet, it's way bigger than 1,000 feet. So I think it's 1,000 meters um, per, per spool of filament, so that's uh, 3,300 feet. So you're talking six, so what is that, six, 60 minutes, uh, no. 300 feet. No, sorry, 3,000 feet. So, yeah, it's 600 minutes. Right. <clears throat> it's 
got to be a thousand feet. That's probably what it is. Not 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 a uh, thousand meters. But I think that that's for one. I think that's for a three millimeter, not for one point seven five. It's a thousand feet. I think the other one's like three. Th- is like uh, fifteen hundred feet or something like that. Anyways, it take it'll take probably a, approximately six hours or so to make a spool on uh, my regular on my multi shooter filament maker. So we go. We're talking about a difference between four minutes and six hours. Right, my next version of the extruder hopefully make a uh, spool every hour or so. But these guys are making a spool every four minutes, right? So the idea is to make a um, filament maker like that and maybe add some in, uh, some engineering ingenuity in there about uh, making it smaller. Because the, the one that they have is ginormous. It's... Um, it's maybe 100 feet long, and the reason why it's 100 feet long is that it needs a whole lot of track in order to cool down the material before it gets to the dimensional control that will read it, read the diameter. Because you can't have it close, because if the di- if the filament is still soft, it'll just squish it. You'll get a bad reading on the diameter, and also you'll make it oval, and when it's oval, it tends to jam when you're trying to print it. So you need all that space to kind of fight the thermodynamics because that filament's moving out of that nozzle so quickly. Um, and then you need uh, something to spool it. So it has this giant track. It's got this big hopper. Uh, I think it does like a spool per load of the hopper um, or more. It might even do two spools per load of the hopper. Um, it's got giant, you know, giant heaters on it you know, interchangeable nozzles, all that type of stuff. And then it pushes the filament out, goes down this track, and then goes in between a, and goes through a dimensional control, and then it goes through a winder, and then it goes in onto a spool, and the spool is, is spun and wrapped up. So basically to build a, that kind of version compared to the multi shear where it's a big, it's a big machine, it, produces is basically a factory for filament even though the second version of my of my uh, extruder is called the fill factory it's not going to be as quick as if you're actually you know in the business of producing filament so yeah that's uh that's basically we're going to build one of those and then um the final piece is the 3D printer. Now for the 3D printer, I'm thinking of doing either a regular printer with a Core XY or I was thinking of doing a Core XY um, Infinite Z printer. I don't know if you guys have seen that where it's got the conveyor belt and it prints on the conveyor belt. And so it's got an infinite travel in the Z direction generally uh, to go around the uh, MakerBot's patent for the Z. Uh, Go around Maker's MakerBot's patent of the conveyor belt. So basically, the conveyor belt rotates through these rollers. You print onto the rollers. By the time it may, by the time the print makes it to the end of the track of the rollers, it cannot make the turn around the last roll around the end of the roller because the roller has got a curve on it, and the bottom part of the print is flat. There's not enough adhesion to the belt for the print print to hold on while it goes around the turn so it pops off and it falls into a bucket so basically you have a production machine at that point it will print as long as it has filament and power uh, fed to it and as long as something weird doesn't happen so they have smaller versions of it uh, my plan is also eventually I'm going to build a smaller version of it myself uh, maybe um, add some innovation to it as well uh, but the and also add a core XY to it so that it's able to do that angle um, core XY to it so it'll be able to increase print speed now and also accuracy core, core XY really helps with accuracy so Instead of making a small version of it, which I plan on doing eventually anyways, 
I want to make a big production grade version of it. So something that will be able to print uh, large objects in uh, production speeds very, very quickly. Be able to uh, put out these uh, large parts. So it might be that or it might be a regular printer. Not the Infinite Z, but Infinite Z is kind of, I think, the future. Especially with the 45 degree angle of the infill to kind of give it strength in both you know, pure X, pure X plane and pure Y plane. Um, I think is a really, really, really cool option. Um, if, it, if your orientation is 45 degrees, of course. So, yeah. Pretty big. I'm saying maybe like a almost like a 5 foot by 5 foot by 5 foot print volume. So, really, really big. And then it could take live filament right out. And maybe even multi-head. Not completely sure yet. Um, but it would take the filament right out of the filament maker and uh, produce parts with it. Now, of course, the, what's coming out of the filament maker is recycled plastic, not not uh, virgin plastic, not plastic that's been formed for the first time. So, what all of this is for is uh, I have an idea for a third world country franchise for uh, recycling plastic. So the idea is that you could take these three machines, and these three machines are very similar to a forum that I'm part of called uh, the Dave Hackens Precious Plastic Forum, where they make these kind of backyard build machines that are designed to recycle plastic and then for you to be able to make products out of it. Except for this is way more emphasized instead of on manual labor, it's emphasized around CNC labor. So be able to uh, produce this with CNC instead of, you know, manually cranking on something or manually pressing on something or whatever. So, uh, the idea is to develop these three products and then the, in a year from now of this coming, you know, this upcoming summer, next, next summer after I've graduated, um, at the end of the school year in May, uh, May 2019, uh, the idea is either the summer or the semester following is to, you know, actually try it. So go to a third world country and see if, uh, and, you know, hire some locals and produce some plastic. So one of my main places that I'm looking at, I have a friend that I did a little bit of work with, um, you know, really, really cool guy. Uh, his name was Lewis, and he was um, and he was developing a uh, an osmosis machine here in the states. And he's from uh, he was originally he was originally sponsored over here to work on it um, by a water conservation company. And um, he he's from Uganda, Uganda, Africa. And uh, he's said, you know, quite a few things about how it's got cheaper labor, cheaper food, it's just, and how the government really, really wants, uh, you know, people to start businesses over there. I don't know how much they care about having, um, having foreigners starting business, even though I'd probably start the business under, uh, uh, Lewis would probably be the CEO, um, kind of, I guess you could say, the, uh, the kind of the shadow head of the business, I guess you could say, but, um, and then he also sent me various links of where people are kind of doing something similar already there. They have less regulations on uh, a lot of things that have to do with garbage and stuff, so some, quite a few people over there, I mean, not a lot compared to their population, but there are decent, there are quite a few people there that are making a living off of going to garbage dumps and just shifting you know, just shifting through the garbage that's on the top and pulling out the plastic because they don't have the regulations like they do here where you know you can't go on to the you can't you can't go and get anything from the dump um yeah so they go to the dump they shift through the plastic they pick out the recyclables they take it back to the warehouse, they shred it into uh, small pieces, and then they ship it out to other countries to make stuff with it. 
maybe make stuff with it. You know, who knows if it ever gets used? Uh, because again, it's it's already been it's already been shaped once, and you know, there's a big uh, stigma about reshaping plastic more than once. So, we'll. Uh, so the idea is that instead of that, um, we would do. Um, we would produce the plastic. We would shred the. Pla- we would get the, the plastic locally. At the location, whether it's Uganda or somewhere else. Right now, I'm thinking Uganda is probably where I'm going to go. But uh, you start at Uganda. Um, you go and collect the plastic. You shred it. You turn it into filament. And then you make something with it right there on site. And so the idea is that what I've been thinking about is what product could I make? Besides, well, the main thing, the main thought is to do what uh, quite a few people are doing now, which is they get the plastic, um, they get the plastic, they shred it, they turn it into filament, and then they ship it back to the States. But then it gets stateside and somebody makes, you know, they print trinkets out of it, which is fine. You know, they can do whatever the hell they want. But it in, then it ends up in the landfill here. And so we basically took it from the landfill there and we put it to the landfill here, which we have even less regulations of being able to pick it up out of the landfill and be able to recycle it. Right? To be able to get it out of the landfill if it ends up there, if it wasn't recycled in the first place. So the idea was to come up with a product that won't, that has, is the least likely to be thrown away and end up in the landfill. So I, I'm going to take you guys on this journey of how I came up with this idea. So I put, I put this scenario in my mind, okay, so you are, um, you are in an empty room and you have to... Um, you have to come up with a product that is least likely to be thrown into the trash. So all you have is you're in an empty room, you have a trash can, and your product. What is least likely product that you would throw into the trash can? Well, my answer is that you would the least likely thing that you would throw into a trash can is another trash can. Right? So you say, okay, well... Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go there and I'm going to make containers. Now, the idea of what this solves is that basically uh, now the plastic can be stored for amount of time that will allow for the technology to develop. So we not just only recycle it, we'll be able to get rid of it, have bacteria eat it and turn it into CO2 or whatever. So to be able to completely delete it from existence, obviously you can't, like, matter cannot be created nor destroyed, you'll convert it into something else, but it won't be a physical litter anymore, it'll be probably turned into a gas, broken down by a bacteria, turned into internal sugars for the bacteria, and then turned into a gas. So the idea is that if you create a trash can, and it ends up in some park or something, it will be there for, you know, 20, 30 years. The sun will destroy it pretty much. But by then, we'll have this figured out where we could um, we could be able to completely delete it from existence where it turns into gas and we don't have to worry about it anymore because it's it will no longer ho- hold its form anymore because the plastic is very de- degraded. Or who knows, maybe we might even have a way to, you know, recycle it back into get good plastic. The idea is just to buy time. So number one, when you have a container like that, whether it's a, you know, trash can or recycle recycle bin, recycle bin is my favorite, but it will help plastics be recycled more. It's a product to be sold. So for example, have it on marinas. So the plastic doesn't get into the Pacific gyre or wherever it's located, wherever the the recycle bin is located. Uh, line, uh, line the ocean fronts and so they could be able to take the plastic and put it in these recycle bins instead of it getting out in the ocean and that will help the, the, the plastic be recycled and if let's say I had a let's say I had a company there as well it would be turned from uh, that trash plastic into another recycle bin that will prevent more recyclables getting out to the ocean or getting into the landfill so it's kind of like a, a tumbling effect where um, it just gets 
everything gets cleaner and cleaner and cleaner. I'm not using virgin plastic to create trash cans. I'm using the, the plastic that I'm collecting to create more trash cans. And the trash cans are collecting more plastic to make more trash cans. So it's just kind of this infinite loop of recycling and being able to uh, provide these places with um, these materials to be able to clean up uh, where they are working. So I'm going to check. Give me one second. Hopefully you guys can still hear me. I, I believe so. I'm going to double check Google Maps. I'm going to turn this off. Make See how close I am getting to uh, shop.build. I'm a ways. I have another 19 minutes. Okay. So I'll give a few more minutes here. We're already at 31 minutes. So yeah, that's the idea. And so, for example, if I, once I get to Uganda or wherever I'm going, I could create trash cans that I could post on the Uganda uh, marina. They're not, they're not located on the ocean. Uh, they're, they're inland, but um, uh, have it at, you know, different places of where people eat and stuff so that, you know, the plastics can be recollected and they create more recycle bins and stuff like that. So now every house could have a recycle bin, every park could have a recycle bin, every um, lake could have a recycle bin, every river could have a recycle bin. Um, every, you know, hotel room, every hotel will have a recycle bin. And all a place for these pieces to be put in and contained so that they don't end up in animals' stomachs and killing the animals and then some other animal eats that animal and it's just, and then eventually it kills the biggest animal that will be able to eat that last animal and, you know, just complete destruction. So, or end up in the marina where the fish eat it and then we eat the fish and then it, you know, causes hormonal imbalances in us uh, because the plastic's leaching you know, toxic chemicals into the ocean and stuff like that. So that that is my idea, and that is the that is the uh, imminent future uh, for the green engineers for this coming school year. Um, not really business. Uh, I mean, that is that is basically none of that's really going to be sold. I guess you could say. I might sell plans for it. I don't know. Uh, the main thing is that that's what's going to be in next year I'm going to be coming in next year uh, I'm going to be being put to use so I will probably do another video where I talk about the imminent business future which is what I'm going to be working on at towards the end of this summer here as well as um, this next coming school year because I will be also working on my regular commercial household products uh, at the same time as well hopefully not really designing but uh, more manufacturing to bring in uh, get some cash flow so we'll talk more about that as well. And also I still need to do some tour chats uh, talking about um, my, uh, what, what am I, uh, all my other products in uh, more details, uh, 30 minutes and talking about, you know, the fill factory and uh, the shredder and such. Um, actually, I think I already did one. I did one already about the shredder, I believe. Okay, so uh, we're getting really, really close here. Um, I will check it out. I might even do another one talking about what I think about the shop and uh, how that'll affect. And I'm going to basically assume what's going to happen from uh, from this shop to uh, what's going to happen at San Jose. So I'm just going to probably have to make an assumption from that. Um, but uh, yeah. I need to find out where my turn is here so I can get off and I don't I don't add more work for myself. But um, yeah, so this has been Steven from The Green Engineers. And I hope uh, you guys enjoyed this uh, chore chat talking about the imminent future of uh, the, you know, The Green Engineers. And um, I hope you guys uh, subscribe and stay tuned. Uh, I want to do a whole bunch more videos I'm about to assemble my shredder prototype, uh, about to weld it shut, 
and then it's ready to rock and roll, ready to shred, and then uh, mount it to a table or whatever. So uh, definitely stay tuned for that. Um, I definitely want to do a video of that guy running. I'm going to try to be more transparent on what I'm working on in video format because it's way easier to do the video format than it is to do a whole bunch of blogs. But then again, it's easier also to do um, the blogs than uh, to talk about every single development that happens in a certain period of time. You know, every, every small little movement. And also, I haven't been uh, very... Um, I haven't been doing a lot on the blog as of late. So um, I'm going to be going back to do that as well. So hopefully I could... Uh, hopefully I'll up, try to upload this video today, uh, the 16th and uh, might even try to upload the second video, which um, I'll do on my way back home, talking about the shop.build San Francisco, if I decide to do that. All right, guys, so thank you so much for uh, listening, and uh, I'll definitely be uh, getting more into the details of this maybe at the end of the summer when I finalize most of these details. I will maybe do another chore chat talking about it. All right, thanks. thank you guys for listening to this chore chat. It's been Stephen from The Green Engineers. If you like this uh, video, I guess you call it, uh, please uh, subscribe for more videos coming up, and I will uh, talk to you guys in the next one. Thanks for listening. Take it easy. Peace.